Hey, so I messed up. I totally forgot to record our meeting today for Tech Talk, August 18th, 2023. So I'm going to record this part just to show um, one of the processes I stepped through with ChatGPT, showing you the Top Hap plugin to ChatGPT and kind of some ideas for how you can use it. Um, so let's get started. So here we are. Here are some notes from our session today. Um, we started off with a with an awesome mastermind uh, where we talked about what people are doing for leads and kind of how to, how they manage them. I think the kind of the common denominator was people were using Facebook and boosting posts and um, and using those to generate their leads. And this coming up Friday, our next talk, I'm going to show you how to not only boost a lead, but also create a Facebook ad. Um, so that should be exciting. Definitely show up for that. Um, so we had that discussion and then we jumped into chat GPT for the second half. Um, real quick, something with chat GPT that you should be aware of are custom instructions. So what that is, is you're kind of setting chat GPT up to know who you are and how you speak and how you write, um, the style and the tone of, of how you write. So it kind of knows. So that's included. That's just kind of a given in any of your new chats. So you can just start talking about yourself. You don't have to prompt for who you are or what you do, um, unless you're coming in there as a different persona, then you would have to do that. Um, but here's how you do it really quick is you, you, you click into, um, I'll show you, here's ChatGPT. You click in down here to the bottom left into your profile, and then that'll show you uh, this menu and you go to custom instructions and what you do with custom instructions, there's two sets of instructions. It's like two text boxes that you can type stuff into. And um, the first one is what would you like chat GTP to know about you to provide better responses. And here's kind of some starters, some topics that you can think about. And this is just a narrative that you put in there to kind of tell about yourself, what you do, um, just different demographics, whatever you think you need to tell chat GPT. Um, so they understand that chat GPT understands that during your conversations. And then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? This is the style, the format. Uh, maybe you have people that write a certain way and you want them to emulate that in the responses. You can do that. There's a bunch of different things you can do to set ChatGPT up um, just to be able to work better for you and easier. Uh, just set that environment up. Then we jumped into using ChatGPT with TopHap. And that's a plugin, so you need to pay the $20 a month for, for ChatGPT. PT, and this will give you access to these different plugins. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Here I am in a new chat with ChatGPT4 enabled. And then you have the plugins right here. You can enable three plugins at any given time. And when you first come in, you won't have any enabled and you wanna go down to the plugin store. So you click that little arrow down, you go to the plugin store, and then you can run through all these different growing library of ChatGPT plugins. Uh, for the purpose of this conversation and for the purpose of real estate, the three that I like are AI PDF, and there's other PDF tools. I just happened to choose this one first. I think there's been more release and they may be different. I'm not sure, but this one's great. Um, it, it, it allows you to feed chat GPT a PDF and you can ask it questions. Like the, the, the example I used for this one uh, was um, homeowners association documents. So you can upload that to chat GPT and you can ask it things like, can I have pets? Where are pets allowed? Um, where can I park? That kind of stuff. And it'll answer you. So you don't have to leaf through this long PDF uh, to, to get your, the answers to your questions. Next one I like to use is Top Hat. Now that's a real estate plugin and it, it, it has access. So there's a free version and there's a paid version. I use the free version and it gives you access to um, listing information, um, public records, just, uh, you know, kind of a basic set of information that you could really pull just off of Google without membership to anything. Um, it focuses it into this plugin, into your chat GPT session, and we'll step through that. That's what this lesson is that I'm going to show right after I give you this kind of outline of the paid chat GPT version. And then the, the third one that I use is called WebPilot. So that gives web browsing capability to your chat GPT session. So chat GPT, I, I believe it's knowledge ends around 2021. So there's a gap obviously of, of a year plus. Um, so what that does is it allows you to inject links to sites with information to kind of bridge that gap of knowledge, right? So if you, you see an article that's about a certain topic, 
um, you can say, hey, please review this article. It'll bring that in, it'll, it'll review the article, it'll summarize it, bring it into your session. And then you can start asking questions and chat GPT will, will combine that information with you know, its, its wealth of information back before 2021. So just a, just a great um, you know, helper to use. So let's jump into using this plugin. And like, like I said, I'll put the link to this uh, Google Doc so you can just copy and paste things into chat GPT if you want to test this out. Um, so you just saw how to have that top half plugin enabled. So it's enabled in my session. And what I'm going to do is show you the scenario I'm kind of thinking for this is what if someone calls you and you feel like there's a potential for you to get the listing and they give you the property address and you're going to meet them at some point or maybe you're going to drive over there and meet them in like, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Well, this will give you a way to very quickly pull information about the property, about the area, um, some public record information, and you'll have it at your fingertips before you run over there and you'll be able to do it pretty quickly. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load this narrative into ChatGPT, which tells about the property and it's asking me, it's telling ChatGPT basically what I'm gonna be doing with this session. So it's kind of ready to go, it's focused. The more you can tell it, better off you are. Don't let it come up with information. So I'm going to drop, I'm going to paste that in here. Hit enter. And so see, now it knows what we're talking about. So now I don't have to keep typing that property address as I run through here. I just have to refer to the property and it knows that it's this address right here. So now the next thing I'm going to ask it to do is give me a link. So I want to see that property. So this is similar to looking it up on Zillow or Realtor or just putting it into Google. So provide a property link. So you can see, make sure that when you do this kind of thing, you see it accessing the plugin you're hoping it's going to access. It may access the wrong plugin and you just tell it in the next session, say, hey, can you please use the top hat plugin for this next question? And it'll say, yeah, and it'll, so it'll you kind of direct it, but it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, so just be aware. So there we go, it just kicked me out a link to the property and it's gonna take me over to the top app site and you have you know, basically the listing from the last time it sold with all the pictures, narrative. Um, so you start to get an idea of the property. And then a, another thing you could ask it is give me a property description. So let's say you wanted to list this house and you wanna do a, a, a cool property description on the MLS or maybe give the, um, you know, the potential seller, potential client, an idea of which, how you would list it. Let's see what it comes up with. So write a property description. So there you go. A beautifully crafted description of the property that you can, I would always recommend editing these because sometimes there's words that you would just never in your life use. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty good. It's going to be adjectives that, that you're going to change. So there you go. You can copy and paste that in, update it. You got it. You don't have to sit there for a couple of hours and go back and forth and ask your friend if it looks good. Um, so the next one is write a CMA and give it parameters for what you're looking for. Now, I would just use this for a quick quick point of reference, right? I wouldn't submit this CMA to the person because this is a free plugin. I'm sure it's missing information, but it's gonna give you an idea of what you're looking at for that area, just in a real quick fashion. Let's say you have this document, you know, in your Google Drive or on your, in, on a text, some kind of editor somewhere on your computer or phone. Actually, I take that back. You can't use this on your phone. This has to be on a desktop computer or a laptop. Um, your phone doesn't load the plugins as of now, as of August 18th, 2023. So that said, um, this will give you some pretty decent information. So we're gonna drop this in and you see, I want it to do a CMA. I want it to be within a five mile radius, a minimum of four bedrooms, three baths. I want it to be within 10 square, 10 square feet of the square footage, 10% of the square footage. I want it to be within 10 years of the, of the year built and something that stuff that's sold within the last six months. And like I said, you've already loaded the property. It already knows what property you're talking about. I'm gonna hit enter. You should see it utilize the top hat plugin, which it is. This one will take a second. You're just asked it for a lot of info. 
So it's hopping around, it's, it's looking at information and um, it'll kick it out here in a second. And whenever it's pulling a lot of information, you'll notice it'll, it'll hop through a couple of sessions through the plugin. So while that's happening, the next couple of things, if you want, you can ask the top half plugin, what can I do with you? Like, what are some instructions that I can send you? It'll kick out a full list. And one of those is location-based insights. So it's gonna give you information about the neighborhood that the property's in. So I'm gonna copy that. Jump back over here and here it is kicking out our CMA. So like I said, this is just a good reference point. I wouldn't use it to, to try to get a listing, I would just use it to get the information in your head, what you're looking at. Um, if it's something where you're, you're looking where you have to show up, you got to act quickly on these, right? They could be talking to multiple realtors. Uh, you want to get there first and you want to have that information at the top of your head. That's what this will do. So there you go. Kicked out a couple of um, properties. One thing that I forgot to do is I could, I, is I, you can also say provide property links for each of these. So then you'd be able to click through. I didn't do that here, but basically it'll just kick out one of these property detail links for each of the um, comparative for the comps, right? That's adjustment. I'll make that adjustment actually in the document so you won't have to uh, do that. It'll, it'll already be there in the narrative. Um, so there you go, you got your CMA, it just kind of gives you an idea of what's sold in the area. Um, and you can tune this in too. You can say, great, thanks for that. Can you also add links? Um, can you can you give me um, you know whatever whatever's missing from here? You can say okay, let's let's hone this in more and only show me five bedroom. So it'll take that and it'll just kick out and it'll filter you down to this. You can increase the area, the radius that you're looking, all that kind of stuff. So but once you have the information in, Chat GPT knows about it and then you can just tweak it. So the next thing we're going to jump to is when I was talking about the location based insight for that property. I didn't have to type the address in. Uh, but I did. So there we go. It's using the top hat plugin. It's, gonna, it's just going to give you a summary of, of, of the market and the, um, the neighborhood. Just get a general idea of comps in the area, house size, that kind of stuff. So now, the next two things I'm going to show you are just ideas for marketing for this property. Um, let's say you're going to have an open house. And you want to post it on social media. So here we go. I'm going to ask it to create an Instagram and a Facebook post for your open house. Give it the schedule. Um, include, include property link. And it's going to kick out two posts you can just drop in to social media. Cool thing, too, is with the, the property link is you can click into that and just grab an image from that and, and have that in your in your open house post. So here you go. Instagram, Facebook post. Then let's say you have a CRM or you have a marketing list, a geo targeted list for that area. Or you even just want to print flyers for the area and, and go door knock and drop a few flyers off. You can do that out of here. This one is going to show you a potential email that you can send to potential buyers. So there you go. You can drop this into your CRM, and um, it's it's you know it's pointing out the variable you know where you can just put first name last name. Um, that kind of stuff out of your CRM. So it gives you a pretty decent email. And again, you can play around with this. You can you can say, yeah, can you please write that in a more casual tone? Um, can you write that in a and make it more salesy? Like you can just play around with with what this thing is going to kick out. So there's a few really time saving cool things you can do if you have somebody call you and you have a potential listing appointment, 
even if you have time, you can run through and just really quick check this out and kind of get you started. Um, I'll do a quick video to kind of walk through that top half, um, just to kind of recreate it and I'll add it to this. So this is gonna cover, so at least you're having the video, me doing the Canva automation, which is which is pretty cool. And um, you, you may not get it right out of the gate, which is fine, because I'm going through a lot of concepts really quickly. Um, so just kind of stick with it and um, hopefully you can go back over the video and, 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 and revisit each step as you go through. So, so first step in this is, all right, Dylan, thanks. Thanks for your input, bro. Um, so the first step, whoa, whoa. I just talked to Siri. <laughs> um, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna get your information. So the goal here is to get a, a month worth of quotes along with the source and then a narrative to post with your um, with this. And this, you know, these kind of things are good just to fill your stories, to fill your reels, just so you can, and you can automate these or you can do it yourself, but at least you'll have your post every day. And, um, you know, this kind of stuff keeps you floating out in the algorithms. Like you're, you're, you're providing content, right? Your content doesn't always have to be hundred percent real estate, hundred percent, you know, market data, all that kind of stuff. You need some personal stuff too. And this, and this helps with that for sure. It keeps you going. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to first seed ChatGPT with what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to go new chat. You always use four. I'm going to drop this first narrative in, and it's kind of setting it up for what I'm doing, and it will acknowledge. Oh, actually, no. I'm sorry. That's not what I'm doing. Actually, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I am going to drop this prompt into there. I was just back on top app. So I'm going to drop this narrative in there. And it's straight up asking to set up 31 quotes with the source and a narrative into a table that I can copy and paste into Google Sheets and create a CSV file for the Canva thing I'm going to show you. And I know that may sound complicated if you've never heard any of that, but I'm telling you, it's super easy. And, and and let me show you the only caveat is that you have Canva and this works with free Canva and that you have um, obviously chat GPT. You can do this with the free chat GPT as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, Canva, chat GPT. And you have either Excel or you have some kind of application you can make spreadsheets with to copy this into. So um, I'm gonna do a new chat because I totally messed that last one up. I'm going to paste that narrative in. And this takes a little time, so it's going to start running through. And I'm going to show you what the results were um, because this is crunching a lot of data. So, so basically, here's the results. This is what it kicks out. So you have, you have the quote, you have the source, you have the narrative that you're going to do. So the quote and the source are going to go into to the Canva automation. And the narrative, you're just going to save this somewhere. So um, if you put this through some kind of automation tool like Loomly, Hootsuite, um, MailChimp, there's a bunch of different tools that you can set up social media posts, calendars that automate your posts and just drop them every day. Um, so this is what it kicked out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag if you'll notice what I told it to do, I said the output should be in table format so you can co copy it into Google Sheets. The first column is quote, the second column is source, and the third column is narrative. So that's what this is right here. So I'm gonna drag through this all the way to the bottom here. I'm gonna do Control C or right click copy, it's up to you. And then I already have a Google Sheet created and I'm gonna select the top left corner and I'm going to paste, and there is your document that you can use. And now I'm gonna save this as a CSV. So file, download, comma separated values, CSV. And that's going to my download folder. 
So now I have a CSV file in my download folder ready to go. So I'm gonna hop over to Canva. <clears throat> you're gonna go and you're gonna, you're gonna go into templates. <clears throat> and I, I recommend a video for this because then you can make it a reel. Um, it's more engaging. And so it has like a moving background and your titles come on in an animated, animated fashion. So you're gonna have people watching it more. They're not just gonna click out of it. So for this demo, I'm gonna use this one right here. So look at it, you're gonna say customize this template. And I always forget to do this, but don't forget to do this, it really helps. If you go to file and just rename it after you copy the template, so you know what it is, because all of your file names are gonna be this. When you drop 31 videos, this is gonna be the prefix to that. So it's, it, you know, you don't wanna have that weird uh, title that Canva puts in. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm going to set this up for September. And now you'll see you have these two fields right here. Um, so you're going to replace these with your quotes in your source. And the way you do that is you use what's called bulk create. And if you don't see this right here, it's it's going to be under apps. And it's it's in here. I've already used it, so it shows up. So once you do it once, that's what you're going to see. So we're gonna go into bulk create. We're gonna use upload CSV. And I'm gonna point over to the CSV that I just created with the Canva output to Google Sheets open. And so now the headings on that CSV, those are your field names, right? So I'm just gonna use quote and source in this. So what I want to what I want to do is right click the field. So this heading and this heading are the two I want to use, and I want to use this for the quote, and I want to use this for the source. So I'm going to right click this one. I'm going to go connect data, and I'm going to choose quote. And then I'm going to right click this one, and I'm going to go connect data, and I'm going to choose source. And that's it. I'm not going to use the narrative for this. The narrative is going to be for when we actually post. And then I'm just going to click continue. And it's going to generate 31 videos that you can use, that you can download, all with quotes in them. So if you'll, you know, I walk through this, there's each of my quotes on there with a cool video backdrop. And then you want to go to get these actually onto your computer. You're going to click over here to share. You're going to click download and make sure you check this download pages as separate files. So that's going to make each video come in as a separate file. And what it's going to do is download a compressed zip single file with all your videos. So I'm going to click download. I'm actually not going to, I already did it so I can show you kind of what happened. Um, cause this one, this takes a while cause it's got to crunch up all those videos. It's going to zip them up and, it, and you're going to download it. Um, so the end result is right here. So I got this file dot, dot zip file and all you do is right click extract. I don't think we can see it, Eric. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you can share us. Can you share a screen on this? Yeah, entire screen. Cool. All right. So here we are in my um, kind of file e explorer. So this is the download. It's a zip file. You right click it. You choose extract. Extract all. And it asks you where you want to save that to. And I, so if I just say extract, it's going to take all these files out of here and it's going to put them in here. And you'll see, I didn't change, I didn't change the title like I was telling you to on, on my demonstration on this one. So it's the weird um, Canva title. But so here we go. This is, and I'll just, I'll drop these in to show you. This is 31 videos with quotes. Here's one of them. You have the animation. Here's another one. 
And then if you if you pair that now with the spreadsheet that you saved, you have your narrative for each of these. So all you have to do, and if you'll notice on that narrative, I had to include, I always wanted to include mindset and my name, say just as an example for a hashtag. And then you have it choose some cool hashtags that um, you also include. So the first two are mine, the second two are from, from uh, ChatGPT. So now you can automate this or you can just go in and create a post or a reel and you can drop this narrative into the reel and, and post it and you don't have to think if you already did it. And that's it. Any questions on that? Um, Eric, if you wanted to use different videos or a different video or, or your own video, is that possible? on canva yeah. to upload your own video yeah it would, in canva you could you um you would just have a you would just create a um create your own and you would upload the video right so if you have you have an instagram formatted video or a you know a, or a landscape video you would upload that in and you would drop that as your background you can you can throw a title um and then a subheading into it and then you would be in the same situation where you do the, you know, you do the bulk import, you grab the CSV, and then you choose the, the fields for your heading and your subheading. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? I asked sarcastically, but if Ivory and I did this, the same thing, exact same, would we come up with the same results? That's a good question. We should hold a we should hold a head to head workshop <laughs> and watch you guys both do it. <laughs> it is. I mean, I I understand it so well, so I know I ran through it pretty fast. But yeah, I think what's the biggest the probably the biggest challenge to this is probably Canva and figuring out your template. Um, but once you get down, you know how to huh. pull that CSV in and yes. assign the fields. Yeah. I mean, pretty quick yeah that's not that's not the problem it's just like you know you have don't give up um so let's say Irene and I both put exactly the wording you did for chat GPT uh -huh. will we get the same results so that Monday both of our posts would be don't give up I doubt it okay all right <laughs> and you know what you want to do really though is is so on this narrative where you're um you're kind of setting it up you can add things in here for style like you can you can you can maybe add some add 10 people that you like and say i want quotes from these 10 people right got it i would do that i wouldn't i wouldn't let chat gpt make my mind up for me uh-huh or you can say like style of quote like you can say i want a mindful quote or i want a business quote or you know so it's got just it. kind of think in terms of that it'll it'll do what you're what you're telling it to do don't don't leave um especially with chat gpt don't leave it up to chat GPT. You want to hone it in as much as you can to get the best results. Okay. And having been a teacher before, there's no place that we have to say that this is from chat GPT. <laughs> no, no, there, there's no copyright issues on this at all. Okay. All right. It's yours. And that could okay. change in the future. I mean, I think, I think all the major lawsuits out there against chat GPT are that sort of thing where mm. people are saying, Hey, you are pulling my stuff into here. Yes. I mean, I, that's totally me right there in the middle of that paragraph. Uh, you know, so there's artists and, and writers yeah. and stuff that are going after Chat GPT, but we'll kind of for now it's awesome. We can use okay. it. <laughs> it's kind of like back with uh, Napster, like when you could pull off free music and then it went yes. away. I have a feeling we might we might get there. <laughs> Probably. Thank you. All right. All right, awesome. Was it hopefully this was helpful to everyone? I you know the the um kind of the mastermind start out to this, uh, I, I, you know, hopefully that'll be, that'll be good. And, you know, I can see the topic and I'm posting, I'll post in the Facebook group. So if we get kind of interaction there, it, that'll help me set up the conversation for Friday and really hone it in, um, you know, and, you know, be helpful. So thank you everyone. If we do we have any more questions. No, I just want to piggyback on what you're saying, Eric. I think it's super vital that if you guys haven't plugged into that Facebook page yet that Eric has provided, get on there because this is where a lot of people 
kind of suffer in silence, right? They don't sit there in the background. They don't want to ask questions or like intimidated or embarrassed to ask a question. And then they're stuck. Um, so yeah, this is a place to be open and vulnerable and just let it, let it flow. Transparent. You need help? Let's do it. That's why Eric's yeah. here. So we love it. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Eric, for doing all this. Hey, Chris. All right, man. Yeah, thanks for, for everyone that interacted too. And we'll uh, see you on the Facebook group or see you next Friday. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Eric. This was awesome. All right, cool. We'll talk to you guys later.